Hello, welcome to this uh, physics video and this one here looking at free fall. Let's start first of all looking at our learning objectives. Now in this one, hopefully by the end of this video we'll know a new relationship between weight, mass and g, whatever g is, we'll find out shortly. The equations weight equals mass times g or w equals n times g and also be able to describe the forces acting on falling objects and explain why falling objects don't keep going faster and faster but in fact reach what we call terminal velocity. Okay, let me ask you a classic question. Right, feathers. Brick dropped from the same height, which object will hit the ground first? Now, pretty obvious really, obviously the brick. And the reason for that is the feathers, they are slowed much more by the air. Greater surface area in proportion to their weight, and so they are slowed by the air, whereas the brick isn't. Now, key word there is air. What happens if we remove the air? What happens then? Let's have a look. Here we've got two situations. Here we've got feathers, brick, in air, feathers, brick, in a vacuum. Now in a vacuum there is no air, therefore there is no air resistance and therefore both objects will fall with the same downward acceleration. So both of these will fall at the same speed and reach the ground at the same time. Hmm, right. What is this acceleration? Well, acceleration of free fall is given as a figure 9.8 meters per second squared. Using this unit here, of course, it is acceleration. And this value of 9.8 is in fact given the symbol g, which we'll look at in a bit more detail very shortly. Often you'll find it in textbooks rounded up to 10 meters a second squared. Okay, to make it simpler at um, our level of study it's 10 meters per second squared. Let's go back to this g bit again, shall we? Now g actually has two meanings. Look in the physics textbook it'll tell you that g is acceleration of free fall that's what we've just been talking about, the feather, the brick, okay, that's how quickly it'll accelerate. But secondly, g is what we call the gravitational field strength which is 10 newtons per kilogram. So let's leave this a moment. Let's go back. Let's go forward rather than back to gravitational field strength. What do we mean by that? Well, the gravitational field strength is the force experienced by any mass. It could be me, you, a brick, whatever, due to gravitational attraction. So we are being attracted to the center of the Earth by this force called gravity. And this force gives us what we call weight. Now weight is a term we use for the Earth's gravitational force on an object. Now it's really really important to distinguish between weight and mass. Let's look at an example. Here we've got a cow. <laughs> yep, pretty realistic cow there and it has a certain mass. We will look in a moment and we'll suggest that being insulting to the cow the cow's got a mass of a thousand kilograms. Now to work out the weight of this, the weight is given by mass times the gravitational constant which is 10. So weight is the mass, whatever mass our cow has, times g which is the gravitational constant. Or we can say w equals mg. Now really important, remember the mass doesn't change. We could take our cow, I've got a name for the cow, we would just take cow anywhere in the universe and the cow within reason will have mass. The cow's mass doesn't change. That's a bit of a hard stretch of imagination thing about taking the cow anywhere in the universe. Just suppose we could, okay? The cow, the mass of the cow doesn't change, okay? However, her weight could change. Let's look. Now, suppose we launch our cow into space. Into space there is no gravity. Okay? Her mass is a thousand kilograms. Stays the same, doesn't it? It doesn't change. But because there's no gravity, she appears to have zero weight. Because a thousand times let's go back a minute. So we've got okay, her, her mass is a thousand. If G is zero constant is zero, zero times a thousand is a thousand. So, how stupid is that? A thousand times zero is zero. So she is 
weightless. So in space, our cow who has a mass of a thousand kilograms actually has a weight which is zero. Now if we put our cow on the moon, I only realise it's a bit of a pun there, sorry about that, the moon. If we take our cow to the moon, the moon has a gravitational constant of 1.6 newtons per kilogram. So her mass doesn't change. We multiply this by 1.6, we get her weight, which is 1600 newtons. Right. Okay. Now on Earth, we know the gravitational constant is 10 newtons per kilogram. So her mass hasn't changed, has it? Her mass still stays the same, but we now know that her weight would be 10 times a thousand, which is 10,000 newtons. So can you see the mass never, never changes. The weight changes according to how much gravity is acting upon the body. In this case, the body of the cow. Now, let's think now about what we call terminal velocity. Now this skydiver here did a very brave thing that Perhaps one day I'll do, I don't know. But as the skydiver falls, the skydiver is being subjected to different forces. We've got air resistance, we've got weight pulling it downwards. Now, falling objects accelerate towards the ground at, remember this? This is the acceleration due to gravity. The force of gravity always acts towards the centre of the Earth. So our um, skydiver is being pulled down at a speed or accelerating speed of 10 meters second squared. Now at the same time the atmosphere creates an upwards force that slows down any falling object. This is known as air resistance or drag. So there's two forces here, aren't there? You see that? The two forces opposing each other. Now the larger the surface area of the object, the larger the drag force, which is why, surprise surprise, our skydiver opens a parachute. Now let's see what happens as she falls. Well, this is this axis here, the x axis got time, here we've got speed. Now, as she jumps out of the plane, her weight, okay, that is gravity, is larger than the drag. So, she will accelerate. She can change this by actually altering her body shape, but that's for another lesson. Now, as she falls downwards, as speed increases, so the drag also increases. You see these arrows are starting to even out, and so her acceleration actually slows down until she reaches a point where there is no further change in speed. So acceleration is zero, and this is what we call the terminal velocity. And you can see now that these two arrows are equal. When drag this one here equals the force due to gravity, i.e. the weight, there's no resultant force, and so there is no further acceleration. Acceleration is zero. The object continues at what we call terminal velocity. Okay, that's the end of this video. So I hope we now know and use the relationship between weight, mass and g using these equations, and hopefully we can now describe forces acting on the falling object and explain why they reach a terminal velocity. Okay? If you're not sure, go back and watch the video again or use other resources to back this up. But I want to thank you for watching and listening and goodbye for now.